to Gems from the Wisdom Traditions, a conversation circle put on every Saturday by Still and Moving Center. The quote that you heard talked about um, carving the very atmosphere in which we live. And I think that our presenter for today does something like that when he does his Tai Chi practice. He's kind of carving space very consciously. Um, this is Dr. Wong Kai Ming, and he's a uh, longtime practitioner of the martial arts. He teaches Tai Chi at Stella Moving Center, and he's also um, a medical doctor. He's coming to us as giving us kind of a sequel. On Mother's Day weekend, he um, spoke to us on part of that that circle of the Tao, um, the yin side. And today for Father's Day weekend, he's going to speak to us on the yang side. And with no further ado, I'll let you take it away, Randy. Thanks, Renee. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, yin and yang balance each other. And uh, it is said that at the beginning of time for this universe, there was that big bang. So uh, prior to that, there was no yin or yang, but the explosion that created the big bang um, basically set in motion what they call the 10,000 things. And on, in, in, in that concept, it created the polarities of the yin and the yang, the light and the dark, the male and the female. And those 10,000 things uh, started interacting with each other. And in this interaction, we have now the creation of uh, the universe as we know it. So I'm um, gonna have you, and you can do this sitting, I'm gonna have you just take your hands and just Kind of rotate, palms facing each other. And as you do so, you create, or as Renee was saying, carving out a spherical space in front of you. And you can take this space and roll it in a sagittal plane, in a horizontal plane, in a coronal plane. And by doing this, Let's see if everybody can sense a little bit of pressure on the fingertips and the palms as you massage this ball in space. And then visualize the interaction, how they are opposite, but connected. One does not exist without the other. And it helps to create that spherical uh, realm of the universe that we are now creating with our hands in front of us. So we actually join the mind of God with our creation. And the pressure that you feel in the fingertips, the palms, that is the chi energy that helps to manifest this creation. So, so there in lies the, um, one of the basic tenets of Taoism in the sense that the, the universe uh, or the Tao encompasses everything that is perfect. And it was created perfect. What happens is when we sense a imbal an imbal imbalance away from that perfect nature, there is usually an excess, an excess of yin and an excess of yang. And there, therefore, the um, principles of traditional Chinese medicine developed to better understand how to bring this imbalance back into balance. And so the, the philosophical difference in how Western medicine is practiced uh, I was trained, you know, in Western medicine, uh, I have an MD, and that science is basically a skeptical science. So
So when we look at things, we look at symptoms and disease and dis-ease or what is out of balance. And then we test, we supply tests to know what is real. And only through the process of clinical trial, uh, studies, experiments, and so forth, you know, what we improve with these activities we know is true. And therefore, in trying to remedy these symptoms, um, we, we try this and try that. Some of it's trial and error. Uh, and, and some would say that the um, protocols from the American Cancer Society, a lot of those have been just that. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a practice of studying reaction to uh, trying different medications and chemicals and so forth. Well, from the Eastern side, the Taoist philosophy, it, it comes in from the opposite end. It comes in saying that, okay, we are all created perfect and we have a perfect nature. And therefore, when things are out of balance, how do we bring it back into balance? And so a lot of the um, <clears throat> practitioners will look at where is there an excess of yin or an excess of yang? And where can we then remedy that situation by administering <clears throat> certain foods or certain exercises? And so the, the basis of, of Tai Chi was deeply stewed in the, uh, the dilemma of having to deal with conflict of these, these elements out of balance. And conflict, of course, uh, other than relating to disease or health issues, uh, that back in that day was actually, how do we protect ourselves from invading bandits or mercenaries or uh, soldiers who basically are trying to um, uh, exert their ex aggression on our communities and our towns. So, you know, they worked with weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. And a lot of those things, um, they used the Tao and th those concepts of balance and how to uh, neutralize aggressive action. So a lot of the martial arts are, are steeped in some of this conflict resolution. How do we, how do we deal with aggressive behavior? If somebody's uh, attacking us, you know, what should we do? Well, it, it was very quickly they discovered that the stronger will win if you're basically fighting force with force. So uh, in the process of understanding the balance between yin and yang, somebody who comes at us with heavy force uh, is best neutralized by pulling that force in a yin fashion. And there, uh, also somebody who basically wants to, um, you know, sweep our leg. Uh, sometimes it may be the expansion of our energy upwards to escape from the sweep. So there, there's this um, general philosophy of using the polar opposite to balance either the aggression or the uh, insufficiency of uh, any characteristic. So if there's a, if the, if there's a sense of weakness, um, basically you have to find strength to bring the balance back. So as Renee said, the uh, issues uh, around Mother's Day, I mean, we were focusing on the yin characteristics. Tomorrow being Father's Day, we're focusing on the yang characteristics. So the, the yang characteristics really uh, are usually identified as male um, expansion. Uh, the forceful um, nature of uh, existence and activity. Heat can also be uh, associated with a yang um, characteristic. 
the ancient Chinese called the tiger the king of beasts and identified it with both the solar and lunar principles of the yang and yin. As masculine energy, they thought the tiger symbolized courage, authority, and fierce protection of the good. As female counterpart to this, they identified it with the earth, matter, and lunar forces. The tiger was the mark of military officers and the emblem of luck courted by gamblers, the god of wealth rode a tiger, which was the guardian of money chests and the goddess of winds whirled about the heavens on a striped and tawny brute. The tiger was wild, but ridden by the gods and immortals. This is written by Helen Balborg, the tiger. And so what I wanna do is actually open up the discussion and entertain questions from uh, our participants here to see how your thoughts and uh, interaction can can add to this discussion. Thank you. I guess I'm interested in the one of the first phrases in that reading about um, the male aspect of the tiger representing courage. So yeah, I'd, I'm kind of interested in that. I mean, I know that um, young energy doesn't have to just be in male people. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Uh, my my wife, her Chinese astrology is tiger, which is I think a very young sign. Um, my astrologic sign is snake, which is a little bit more on the yin side because you know snakes will like to crawl under rocks and just, you know, not basically interface with, with anything unless, you know, it's food. But, uh, and, and that's my problem. I, I, I'm on a seafood diet. I see food and I eat it. So, um, but, uh, and it is, it is, it is, I, I would say it's the, it's the nature or a characteristic of any being or any action that lends the young character to it. So um, I think somebody who is uh, assertive and speaks their truth, uh, that person, whether male or female, I would say, uh, has young characteristics. Uh, somebody who is, um, say, meek and perhaps uh, doesn't want to um, put their uh, their ideas out there or intentions. Uh, they tend to be more on the yin side. So, um, I, I and 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 it's it's, a, it's an oversimplification to put people in categories this way. So, um, I would just uh, yeah uh, see if. And, and as, as you go along, uh, again, the, the solution for conflict, solution for dis-ease, um, it's a way to understand, I think, where things are not balancing and where we can bring balance into our uh, existence. Thank you. Roger. Uh yeah, I, I uh, think as we look in a bigger picture and what's going on in the world today, we're seeing on a really grand scale the the, the rising of the yin and the the uh, acceptance of the female principle. And uh, uh, women, you know, in cultures the East and West have been held down for five thousand years. And so today, and I think it probably started in the West, but now even in the East, women are much more open, they're able to do things. And at the same time, we're getting the uh, East and West more integrated. So as we get to this balance point, it seems like there's a huge backlash. Uh, well, we have it in this country, you know, with the uh, uh, white male supremacists 
who don't like giving up their power to the to the feminine principle. And uh, uh, so we're going through this traumatic period. I just wondered, is the East West concept uh, similar to uh, you know uh, male and female? Is that is there a yin and a yang for East and West? Uh, or maybe you could see. I kind of see yang uh, West as yang and East as yin. But I, I just wanted the conversation to consider this period that we're going through and looking at it through this lens that you've set up of the rising of, uh, or the balance that we've been out of balance for so long. And now we're kind of uh, kickstarting and kicking ourselves as we try to get to the balance. That's an excellent question. We brought up, I think, a, a sort of a visual with our yin discussion that nature is perfect. And if you take the role of a mountain standing over a lake with little skirmishes going on, uh, alligators, you know, grabbing prey for, for food or, um, you know, these, these um, interactions, again, between the, the, the animals and the plants, the trees. Um, if you step back far enough, Things are nature, they're natural, and they are perfect. Uh, there may be a cloud coming through, um, and in our position as mountain, we don't really have any judgment or concerns about this, this cloud becoming bigger and darker, and then lightning and thunder and rain coming down. Um, the mountain doesn't even have uh, concerns or uh, expectations about the rain uh, washing its topsoil away down into the lake below. So, um, but Roger, I think you brought up an in important perspective that yes, things are out of balance. Um, and it's, it's showing up in the news, it's showing up in uh, a lot of, um, I guess, the sort of the vocal activists are, are basically claiming their right to speak about, you know, what their um, beliefs are. And again, if you step back far enough, you accept all of this as part of the Tao, part of nature. And um, there is no judgment passed on that. Um, if the dis-ease or the imbalance uh, is of major concern, uh, there are actions that can be brought up to remedy it. Uh, just, you know, let's go back to the nature uh, analog. Um, you know, global warming is uh, an issue that is everybody's concern. Um, in one perspective, it may be the earth or the yin aspect of nature that is now saying, okay, you know, um, you've destroyed too much of the ozone in the atmosphere and the um, carbon dioxide is building. And uh, yeah, you may notice a lot more of the uh, earthquakes, uh, volcanoes uh, erupting. And as a result, you're going to have tsunamis and other natural disasters. Well, disaster is a uh, relative term. We're putting that uh, our perspective on top of these events, which may, again, just be a balancing process where Earth is saying, OK, um, you know, you've, you've, you've basically damaged the ecology and these are the consequences that come up. Uh, and, you know, from a Taoist perspective, we have to accept that this is, you know, we've done, we may have done this to ourselves and we need to deal with it. Um, so it's a, it's in, in a sense, a lot of our perspective is based on 
our emotional judgment on why things are not right. David? But this notion, Randy, that you mentioned about uh, treatment being uh, looking at this situation, whatever it is, and Randy brought up you know, the global situation, maybe the social environment of our planet at this time, and trying to assess, is it a matter, is it excessively, excessively young, insufficiently yin? What would you say, what would be your diagnosis in terms of what's happening globally, sociologically? And then to follow on to that, is then what might some sociological treatments be of to bring that into balance? Is, is, that, is that an understandable question? Mm. What do you think? We have more too much yin going on or too much yang happening? What's causing imbalance in our world? And it could be different, um, I would think, from an ecological perspective or a political perspective or different cultural perspectives, different things are happening. To me, it's pretty clear. We have an excess young and um, certainly in, in the males, we have insufficient yin. Men are trained to despise women's qualities like uh, empathy and feelings so that we'll be able to kill people. We'll be able to be more young. And uh, we see this in, in who we admire, you know, soldiers. And, and uh, you look at the war in Ukraine and see how uh, pathologically young that is. And so I think it's a, a, a both, uh, uh, David, that it's uh, too much yin, too much yang and not enough yin. And uh, even in women, you know, it's not it's not just men and women, but it is the male uh, principle that has been dominating the world for a long time everywhere, and the woman that's been put down. And it seems to me we're starting to to rebalance that, and we're having this huge backlash. Everything we've mentioned is seems to me excess yang and insufficient yin, and and as we try to make this incredibly huge transition. We're, we're struggling with it, and uh, the young is fighting back. Are there any instances that people can think of where we have too much of the yin and not enough yang? For example, I was asking a question about courage, which is, is a, a, I think, typically seen as a, a yang uh, trait. Maybe we don't have enough courage sometimes to, to take on some of these problems. Maybe we're too passive, which would be more of a yin trait, right? And, and we need to bring out some of that, that fire, that energy to address things and um, be willing to take the personal consequences for doing so. Bob? Yeah, I think it's very interesting to think um, I think what Dr. Wong was talking about in terms of judgment, um, you know, in a certain way we could think of the seasons and say, well, summer is coming, it's hot, it's dry, it's a yang season. Spring, uh, much more moisture, um, rain, flowers coming, blooming, that kind of new life. That's yin. But that's not really to say yin and yang is too much, too little. That's the way the seasons are. Um, there's a saying, I think it's in Taoism, um, from the one comes the two, from the two comes the three, from the three come the 10,000 things. The one is the Tao, the two is yin and yang, the three are heaven, earth, and man. And, you know, we get caught up on the man, you know, in other words, what's our interest? Oh, it's too hot, global warming, it's not a good thing. From earth's point of view, hey, this has happened a lot. Out of balance from the Earth's perspective, we've gone through ice ages and global warming countless times. It may be that human beings cease to live, but from heaven and Earth's point of view, that's, it's a bigger kind of perspective. So there's, I think there's kind of an interesting thing about judgment of not really focusing on 
the balance part of it and how big the balance is. You know, from our point of view, point of view yes okay if it's too passive as renee says that's too much yin but passivity can also be just returned from another perspective receptive uh being yielding and you know that kind of thing so that there's a sense of just being natural about it without the labeling of too much too little you know and trying to see where the balance is you know where our response is of a certain kind of way rather than say this is good or bad. Um, and it's natural to do that from, you know, heaven, earth, and man, from man's point of view, war is bad, peace is good. Um, but, you know, it's also a very limiting way of looking at things. I, I think you can lose a certain heart if, if you get, if you go too far along those lines. And you, and you lose the compassion that is really needed to look at something like war and its horrors and, and to have the courage to do something about that. Um, I think that, um, yeah, taking too much of an impassive outlook can paralyze us from acting with the um, with the necessary compassion that we need. Um, I don't think everything in the world is supposed to be accepted. Um, there must be, it seems to me, some purpose for each of us being here. And if we were to simply um, sit like stones at the bottom of the river and let the whip raw water flow over and around us, what would be the purpose of being in a human body and having choice and the ability to take action. And, and that, that requires, um, uh, you know, from a Buddhist perspective, some, something of the mind discrimination and something of the heart, the compassion. But even within that, you know, it's, it's interesting, like Thich Nhat Hanh at one point felt anger you know, with the boat people. And he, he realized that, you know, from a bigger perspective, that labeling of these people are, these pirates, these rapists are bad, these are good, that, that there's another way of looking at it. We're all part of, we're all interconnected. And that interconnection at one point, again, it's the judgment that is negative. The yin and yang is our way of balancing with it. So, you know, we can still be compassionate as a natural response to things, but there's a kind of arrogance behind some of things. And there's also useless emotions, you know, to say, oh, how bad things are going. Oh, it's so awful. It's so awful. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> and it can be debilitating as well. You know, we're correct. It is awful. But, it, you know, it's not, we suddenly have sort of opted out of our reaction and our reaction uh, includes yin and yang as we sort of feel it uh, without the judgment element. I mean, I've, it, it's a subtle kind of thing. And I, no. my gut feeling is, is that, you know, anger can be appropriate, but it, it's, a, it's a very tricky thing to express because it becomes arrogant very quickly. Yeah, I mean, even the Dalai Lama speaks about the uses to which we can put anger and we do have to set aside our judgments and to become very cool and to take the personal out of the anger and transmute it into something more like courage. And I think it is possible to be both non-judgmental and discriminating, um, saying, this is the need at the moment that I see before me. Maybe I, I can't address, address whole global word, world problems, but this is what I see before me as a need. And this is something that I, with my clear discrimination and my feeling compassionate nature, I feel I can do something and I should do something. And 
it's not a matter of judging people or even judging um, good or bad. It's, I think that it has more to do with, I perceive suffering and the possibility of alleviating suffering. And when we have that kind of perception, no one person is good, no one person is bad. All of us suffer and all of us could benefit from being relieved of that suffering. I think if we uh, think of our fathers and basically representing sort of that yang energy, uh, compared to mom, you know, dad is strong and he is uh, in, in many cases, um, characterizes sort of the testosterone of maleness that uh, allowed us to become existent. Yet that fatherly character uh, also has tenderness and sensitivity. And some would say those are yin characteristics in a man. Um, but if we cherish father as the energy that he represented and carried and his role in our upbringing and development and support that he provided for us to become adults and who we are. Uh, you know, I think that's the benevolent young characteristic that, you know, we all should think of this weekend. This is an aside, I think Bob kind of led into, help me kind of remember, and I, I don't remember if we discussed this with our um, yin discussion, but I have patients who come to me for breast reconstruction after they've been diagnosed with cancer in their breast. And uh, a lot of times I've had to explain to them from, I guess, the Eastern perspective that, Yes, we can attack it surgically, we can attack it with radiation, we can attack it with chemicals, chemotherapy, uh, which in my perspective is a very young thing. It is basically, uh, let's attack these cells that basically are foreign or not foreign, but don't belong in your, your nature, in your natural tissue. Well, what happens is, this population of cells quickly perceives it's under attack. And even if the treatments do knock a lot of them off, many of them will go underground and they'll dig in deeper. So I tell them, wouldn't it make sense if you could talk to these cells and say, look, if you continue your aggressive uh, nature with our tissues, um, you'll kill the host. And if you kill the host, then you kill yourself. And so wouldn't it make sense? And, and I do believe cells have an intelligence. Wouldn't it make sense to talk to these cells and say, look, the actual answer is peaceful coexistence. If you, the cancer cell can just exist, you know, will provide some circulation, oxygen and nutrition, but just stop growing, stop multiplying as, as aggressively as you are. And then, you know, if we can coexist, we will have a longer life and uh, it, it'll work out. And some of them will tell me, it says, gee, isn't that the solution for world peace? If we could get all of these <clears throat> aggressive actions to think about the greater picture, uh, can we coexist peacefully with compassion, with understanding, and accept the differences uh, between us? Then, you know that that may uh, be ideal, and as Renee you know, as I stated, it, it, it may not ever happen. 
because we are dealing with so many perspectives and so many egos and national agendas. So it, there, there is a role for each one of us to actually speak our truth, stand in our truth, and be uh, vocal enough to express what we believe. Thank you. I see we have Judy with her hand up and then Luke, River. I've been a student of the Lords uh, for many years of uh, Shaolin Kempo, which is, you know, a yin yang flowing hard style until I was 75. And then I went into Tai Chi and was most impressed uh, with the yin style until I was severely injured three years ago. So now I, I don't have legs to kick anymore. But uh, what I wanted to ask is if there's a sense in my years of study of the martial arts, which is only 17, not very long, I have really discovered in a sense that the yin seems to overcome the yang. Americans are very young in their expression of the martial arts, you know, a lot of boxing, and once I was in San Francisco and uh, Grandmaster Rick Alamany, who lived in Hawaii for 10 years, uh, was teaching. And there were everyone up there in this dojo is in black belts, regalia. And we're all standing there in this tiny Chinese man. We didn't know it was Grandmaster Tony Ho walks in. And Grandmaster Alamany didn't introduce him as a bit of a joke. And Tony Ho said, to any of the big fellows, attack me any way you want to. And they just came in with punches and kicks and they all went flying every which direction. It was quite humorous. And then we want to know, who are you? And well, he was a grandmaster of Tai Chi from Taiwan. And so in that day, I thought the yin has so overcome the yang, or at least the mentality that the group had in general of wearing all this regalia and being, you know, very uh, powerful and, and punching hard. Uh, so, I mean, can you really answer this? Does the yin ultimately overcome the yang the way water overcomes rocks? Or must we go for the balance in the universe? Just a quick response. It is not about one overcoming the other. I think what you described is certainly yin overcoming yang. But if you look at that Tai Chi symbol, mm -hmm. where there's an excessive of yin, there's always a little bit of yang, that mm -hmm. dot. And then it, it, it is supposed to be dynamically moving and circulating so that uh, it, there, there, is, there is a yin rising and then a yang rising and they take their turns. And so it just depends on when you catch them and uh, it's, it's actually very difficult to find them very equal. So there's always one rising as the other one is waning. I'll jump in. I wanted yes, to Nico. add think something comforting for me about yin and yang, especially when uh, imagining all of the off-balanceness in the world, there, there's a level of natural world yin and yang that I feel very comforted by where you know the winter solstice is the birth of yin energy or I'm sorry yang energy as the spring flowers grow up towards the heavens and then in the summer solstice is the birth of the yin energy and everything begins their death cycle but even in our day um around noontime when the sun is highest in the sky I feel this maximum yang energy and last night at midnight, I was meditating in this maximum yin energy. And so it's really comforting for me to look around at all of the aspects of how Wuji breaks into yin and yang. And then the two become the three. And my experience is guiding in an inevitability that yang will at max peak become yin. And so when I see people voicing these political frustrations, um, I, I see it as perfect for where they're at on the spectrum of their growth 
every voice needs to be heard. We can't suppress or stifle any expression and everything is human and, and everyone deserves to be in dialogue and that's how we all grow. And so whenever something seems off balance, I just love to bring in this other idea of, um, yes, it may seem off balance, but it's also perfect for where it is within the cycle. Um, so that's what I wanted to add to the conversation. Thank you, River. Lynn, you've taken some Tai Chi from Randy uh, at least this year, maybe longer. And um, what are some of the things that you've noticed? Uh, any changes in yourself from practicing an art like this? Any yin yang changes? Thank you. Yes. Uh, I've been, it's been about a year since I started the Tai Chi classes and uh, so many things are different. Um, mm -hmm. My body is different. My balance is better. Um, I'm totally enjoying what I'm doing. And I think um, I'm more balanced in just staying calmer, uh, in looking at a whole range of different objects and experiences uh, that are possible rather than just, okay, this is the way it is and this is what we do. Um, I think the Tai Chi seems to open all of that up. Uh, tell me how you feel things have changed for you physically since doing um, Tai Chi. Um, I have lost weight, but at the same time, I have uh, firmed things up. The muscles are much stronger. Um, little areas where there was fat, you can start seeing little creases coming in, which means the fat's going away and the muscles are starting. So, uh, and the biggest piece of course is balance. I mean, when I started, I couldn't stand on one foot and open the door and then kick and then close the door. I can do that. Wow. So it's taken me a while, um, but I can see that and I feel better. I feel 100% better than when I started. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I practiced um, Tai Chi for the first, I don't know, five to seven years that we were open as still a moving center. And it was my first time to do Tai Chi. And I tend to have very bouncy energy, a kind of a tigger <laughs> kind of energy. And um, the combination of practicing hula and Tai Chi was very, very grounding for me. And um, I, I feel also, yeah, a better ability to um, not get so emotionally um, wrought or up, <laughs> kind of emotionally bouncy, but to, to keep my uh, emotional nature a little calmer. And therefore I, I feel too, I have a better perspective to look at and think about things. Yeah. And hula also, you know, is very grounding, you know, having that, that hip swinging and uh, very grounded in the earth and the bent knees. Um, so the two of those together have been really wonderful, I think. So I guess, is that more yin energy that I was Ground, getting? Grounding? grounding is a yin direction, yes. So mm -hmm. it was balancing the yang tigger bounciness <laughs> that was you were, you were expressing. Uh -huh. Sounds like a yin deficiency. Yes. <laughs> I'm wondering uh, if, Phil, if Master and all of you, if, if you feel that at least in the 21st century, starting with the uh, Title IX in women's sports in college, that women are much more allowed to express their young energy. When I was a high school girl in the 1950s, we were told to be feminine. That is play half court basketball throw the ball in a girly fashion and uh, generally not be coordinated. Well, I was none of these things. I love to play. I love to play basketball. I played with the boys. So I knew we could run the full court, which women do now. And I 
My mother always said, Judy, why do you like to play with the boys? And I said, because they're doing what I want to do. And here I was, 60 year olds later, uh, lined up for the punching bag with the boys and still enjoying it. So I never changed. So do you think this is a, a kind of wonderful thing that has happened, that women now can express courage and young energy, whereas we were once told that it wasn't feminine, that there was something wrong with this if we were doing sports and doing it well. And I, I think this has been um, an important development in this century. And now, you know, boys can now take cooking and tailoring in high school, mm -hmm. which they couldn't do when I was young because that was considered women's work. That was considered a feminine. <laughs> Some of the best chefs mm -hmm. and tailors in the world are men. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. it's hard. I was yeah. reading. I was reading a short story about Hawaii and they had what was called girls basketball and boys basketball. And girls basketball, you, you dribbled differently. You weren't allowed to you know, uh, do certain shots because those were too uh, boy-like. And so there was a whole different style of it. And some girls would just go crazy because that's they wanted to play the more yang style of basketball. I mean, within basketball, yin and yang, are both there. And it was funny that, you know, that stereotyping of boy and girl was sort of in that context. Um, you know, it seems to me that really a lot of activities and virtues, you could say courage, that's a very yang thing, but you could imagine a very yin expression of courage. Um, there was a, a tale of the Buddha when the Buddha was reborn as a tiger and at one point, his uh, her uh, cubs were dying of hunger, and so she kills herself to provide food for the. Uh, well, that, that's a sacrifice. Sacrifice of oneself is a very yin activity, but it's very courageous. Yes, wonderful answer. Yeah. What do you think, Mary? Well, I, first of all, I want to thank you, Renee, because I don't know a lot about the other um, traditions in the world. Um, my, my knowledge is very limited, but what I just, what resounds to me is number one, respect and compassion, because we're all, we're all in this one ocean we're in individual boats, but it's it's one world, it's one ocean. And um, I like what, I forget who was said about this, I think it was River, about the seasons, because they come and go and they come back and they go and it's a constant cycle. And we're here to have joy in our lives and give joy to other people. And when there is conflict, I like that, you know, we've got to resolve this. We can't keep bashing people's heads. Let's go ahead and work it out. And then we can all enjoy life. Amen. Thank you so much, Mary. I see uh, Carolyn coming on to the screen. Well, I just think that the challenge is balance uh, in what is a uh, dynamic and unpredictable reality that we live in. And so what we really need to do is to cultivate um, cultivate each of these yin and yang because it's within them that we um, we dis we have to discover what the potential is because each of them can get us all tied up. And then each of them can be a source of creative change. So I think that's what I, I think it's a constant search for gaining balance, but yet keeping moving uh, in creative and re relevant ways. I think that's what I would say, and I'm grateful for um, the speaker being so informed and perceptive. Yes, me too. 
Conrad, would you like to weigh in? Uh, no, there's a lot to think about. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, the perspectives, uh, you know, I appreciate all of that. And, you know, again, with every good, I mean, or every bad, you know, there's some good out of it. But, you know, again, it's just a perspective. You know, I appreciate, you know, like um, all the different perspectives and people sharing their thoughts. Uh, Randy, do you have anything yeah, well, um, that well, you'd like to say? Oh, well, yeah. Thanks for your comments, Conrad. And, and Carolyn, I would also uh, thank you for your, your perspectives. You know, when I was earlier on, actually, after I got my master's certificate in one of the Chinese martial arts, it's a China, which related to seize and control. Um, what I found was that the students that came to me early on, and most of them were young men, and they were coming to us for training in martial arts, mostly out of fear of being beat up or taken advantage of. or um, And so they had this need for dominance and control. And we tried to quickly teach them that, you know, force against force, the stronger, the bigger will always win. And as uh, the years went by, as I continued teaching, I realized that, you know, the, the young upstarts, they, they learn a technique and their testosterone kicks in and they want to try it out, you know, and they'll go pick fights or, you know, just to practice their techniques. And it took a lot to actually convince them that that's not the way. That is not the way. As they learned more and more, they started to develop a confidence in their abilities. That confidence then started controlling or tamping down their testosterone and their need for dominance and control. And it gave way to a, a force of compassion and harmony. And so when you see somebody, and particularly those who have black belts or who have advanced certificates in martial arts, these are the most peaceful warriors around. They have this sense of groundedness and balance, and there's no need for them to really demonstrate that, you know, they can, they can whip your ass. I mean, it's not, that's not them. That's not who they are. The ego of dominance and control starts fading away. And, and that's, what, that's what we like to see in our students as they gain the confidence in knowing their body, knowing that, you know, harmony is the way. Not picking fights, not you know, making trouble, raising ruckuses and going out and, and proving that they're better than the next guy. Um, and, you know, one of the first things we teach them is there is always somebody better than you. And you don't want to run into him if you're picking fights. So just chill and, and, and you know, go with the flow and, and just don't, you know, don't, don't uh, get uh, the negative side of the yang out there. And as you can then understand where your power comes from, and it's through our connection, not just you, because we're not, we're never alone. The connection with each other is stronger than any one of us. And that's what we need to use to express and manifest balance and peace. Thank you, Randy. That's amazing closing. Just amazing. Well, is there someone who would like to uh, give Dr. Wong a, a little vote of thanks? Judy, are you leaning into that? This is a thankful, a thankless job, so I really don't need it. <laughs> I didn't hear the full presentation because I was on another Zoom call, but I, I would uh, like to thank uh, uh, martial arts uh, Tai Chi master for his wisdom and his balance and his humor. 
Um, mm -hmm. so I think it's important to keep that that uh, they uh, that we can apply what we learn in the martial arts to all aspects of life. And it's got to be courage and compassion. Yes, thank you, Judy, and thank you for bringing your many years of martial arts um, practice and the depth of insight that you've gained from that. And we're so grateful to all of you for joining us and uh, participating and with listening ears as well as speaking. Um, appreciate all of you so much, and especially Dr. Randy Wong Kai Ming. Thank you so much. <laughs>